Hey guys, long time no see, welcome back to the channel. Today we're in Osaka, this is Osaka station right behind me. I was in the area for work earlier today, so I figured since we've never done Osaka on the channel, I might as well just take this opportunity and make a video. So today we're gonna do some smartphone photography. I've got the Pixel 9 Pro XL with me. That's a mouthful. But straight to the point, we're gonna go around here in Osaka and take some snaps and see what you can achieve with this phone. Um, We'll probably do a comparison as well because I've got a full frame camera and few lenses so we can compare each focal length. I'll put that somewhere in the chapters. I'll put the settings I'll use with the phone on the screen for your reference, but I'm just gonna shoot raw and use the 50 megapixel file format so I get maximum resolution out of them. In terms of edit, I'm just gonna keep it very simple and put one of my presets on the images in Lightroom, do a bit of exposure correction, maybe a bit of masking here and there. And that's it, so you can get a realistic idea of what you can easily achieve with this phone. Enough talking, let's go. All right, so since we're at the station, and in case you don't know, Osaka Station looks pretty cool. I'll take a few snaps here, and then we'll move to some different location in the city. Um, camera. Boom. It's, there's a bit of a delay when you press the shutter button. I don't know if it's like the processing or what it is, but compared to a normal camera, there's a bit of a delay, but slightly annoying. But, okay, this looks very cool. Yeah, I love this. Maybe do like this, yeah. Cool. All right. I wonder if we can get one of these moving trains with the... There's a long exposure. I'm just gonna try. I'm not gonna go like try to be all pro mode on this phone. I'm just gonna use the tools that it provides and see what we can do. I'll wait a bit for a good opportunity, but let's see. Hold still. Okay. See what we got. The long exposure is achieved by the smartphone processing the image. They look pretty good, but it will only give you a JPEG file. If you'd like a RAW file, you'll have to go in the quote to quote pro menu and set the shutter yourself, which is fine, that's what you do on a normal camera, but it's a bit more finicky on a smartphone and makes the long exposure button more of a fun tool than an actual usable feature from a photography standpoint. I did it this one. It's a bit laggy already. This is brand new. This is the first time I use this phone. Just to let you know. And it's a tad laggy already. Okay. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. Okay. All right. It's not the best framing, but I guess it'll do, so we can keep moving. I think there's a cool spot up here too. So, I'll go. Usually, I think you can see a lot of people down there from here. Yeah. Yeah, this spot is cool. So, I'm gonna post myself here. Maybe do 1x, then boom. Maybe 0.5. Oh yes, 0.5 is good too. Maybe that's cool. It's too much. Barely. That's pretty cool. Okay. All right, let's go. All right, so we are now at the Tenma Ichiba. That means Tenma Market. Probably recognize with all the lanterns, it's, I guess, an Instagram famous spot, you could say. It's my first time to come here and it's, there's, it's like, okay, there's no one. <laughs> Maybe the timing is wrong. Wow, this is very noisy, I apologize. This is kind of cool, maybe.
Okay. Carry on. Okay, let's go to Osaka Castle and do some comparisons. Say hi to my ride. All right, guys, so we just arrived at the castle. It's already getting dark. I really don't have so much time to do this. But what I'll do is I will take a photo with the full frame at 16, 24, 50 and maybe like 120 or something like that. That should be the equivalent of the 0.5, one time 2x and 5x of the Google Pixel. I had to crop in the full frame photos to match the sensor's aspect ratio of the pixel so they appear a bit more zoomed in. But here we can see that for static subjects in good lighting conditions, you can barely tell the difference, at least if you post them online. However, with more complicated subjects, moving subjects, especially if the lighting conditions are not as good, the same cannot be said, as you'll see in a bit in the low light part of the video. But overall, I have to say that for a smartphone that fits in your pocket and you will carry with you everywhere anyway, this is pretty good and impressive. All right, so we made it to Dotonbuli for blue hour. Let's take a few snaps here, see how the phone does in lower light conditions. Take a photo of this guy, I guess it's mandatory here. Wow, okay. I found the next shot. 5x. Oh my god. Oh no, none of them are centered. It looks centered in my screen, but... I've got to say, the phone lags a lot, you know? It's always off-center. I can't take it centered, I don't know why. This is annoying. One last attempt. Yeah, it's not centered, but I don't know if you can see in the GoPro. What I'm shooting, it's like... Ah, okay, this one is centered. Again. All right. Let's say that's good. Now we've arrived at Shinsekai. This will be the last part of the video. We're just gonna try some night low light photography. You might recognize this guy. Okay. Let's try with 1x. Still not showing the night mode. Maybe it's not dark enough. Okay. Kind of cool the taxi like this. And the guy, salary man. I'd like no cars in the background, but okay. Mm. 
Okay, this is some good low light test. Oh, it's not bad. All right, that's it for this video. As usual, I hope you had a good time. In conclusion, I would say that for anything that's general purpose, maybe you go do some tourism somewhere, you go to some place, you want to snap some memories, maybe take some photos of the monuments, stuff like that. Uh, even the people under good lighting, um, as long as things are kind of static-ish, then it produces some pretty solid images. But if you try to do some stuff a bit more niche, maybe some street photography, maybe you're trying to frame things with moving parts, especially if you use the telephoto lens, especially if the lighting is a bit less ideal, then things start to fall apart. But I mean, all the hardware is fit in a very slim, tiny package. So it is to be expected. You cannot really compare that with the mirrorless that has a much bigger body to fit everything inside. So it's not, it's not really fair in that sense. So I would say it's pretty solid. Um, the fun modes are just that, in my opinion, in the sense that slow shutter, things like that, in the sense that uh, they are not real. The phone processes the images to make them look like it was a dragging shutter, for instance. And that leaves you with a JPEG file. They look good, but they're JPEGs processed by the pixel. That means you have over sharpened images, uh, maybe a slightly weird white balance, things like that. And you cannot undo it because it's baked in already. So they're fun. You can have fun and get some interesting photos with them. But from a photographer standpoint, it is just a fun mode. It's not really a very usable feature. Um, Editing the raw files was surprisingly easy. Um, I could edit them side by side with my full frame mirrorless and get them to look very close without making too much effort using the same preset, slap the preset on them, tweak them a bit differently because they're different files from different sensors. But without too much effort, they could look very close for the good condition ones. I didn't make this video so that you go buy the smartphone, but in case you're interested, I leave a link in the description. I'll also leave a link to the presets in case you're interested. Please go check them out. And yeah, let me know if you enjoyed the smartphone photography type of content. I had fun. I could try different smartphones if that's something you like. But yeah, in the meantime, take care. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.